fruit of your lips. Bless the Lord with the fruit of your lips. Bless the Lord with the fruit of your lips. Go ahead and show the Lord is hearing you. Bless him with the fruit of your lips. Come and ensure the Lord is hearing you. This is not time to look at your neighbor. This is not time to spectate. It is time to participate. It is time to be part of what is happening. Inside, outside, lift your voice. Ensure the Lord is hearing you. Barata pe ko parada ba balataya, sheta pe ranta pa lo so barata ba. Ha barata ba ka ba shota balataya. Let the Lord Himself tonight you receive that worship, that praise from your lips, from your mouth. Rapa ka parada ba ka shola bata. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we've gathered unto you, great and mighty one. Tonight, may no one return back the same. Visit us with your word. Appear to us through your word tonight like you did in Shiloh. Let everyone have an experience. Lift your hands wherever you are. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your heavens and the Tonight my altar is calling me. Yes, my altar is calling me. Yes, my altar is calling me. Yes, our altar is calling you. So let the fire from your presence place our bodies. Let the fire. Yeah. 
sure you are participating. Nobody can do this for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands wherever you are. I love the way you love me, Lord. Just lift your hands. You don't have to sing. What can I do? But love you back. Lift your hands and just be still. If you can, lift your hands and just be still. Just whisper it to him. Ah, 
What to say, just chant ah. the voices inside and outside. Synchronize with heaven and allow these spiritual activities to take their place. your hands wherever you are, inside, outside. I'm seeing two people, the power of God is coming on you, and the Lord is delivering you from the spirit of depression, depression, depression. I hear depression is leaving you right now. Wherever you are, the power of God comes on you. Let that deliverance be effected right now. Right now. You are two in number. I cast that spirit of destruction now. By the authority of the cross. Be free. And be free completely. Shabarata kabalatiana. Leparata babako sobelata baratiana. 
Let the joy of our Lord bring your strength. Bring your strength. Bring your strength. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. 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 tonight open your word to us let everyone be transformed taken to new levels of grace and glory thank you for your presence in Jesus mighty name we pray please if you can be seated Proverbs. What can I say? What can I do? But love you back. I love the way you love me, Lord. I love the way. What can I say? What can I do? But love you back. What can I say? What can I do? But love you back. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. I love the way, I love the way you find me. This is the way you find me. I love the way.
chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 18. I wanted to start a series today, but considering that next week is miracle service, it's not going to give us time. So, the Lord placed something very serious in my heart to share briefly. And then we could start the series after the miracle service on Sunday. Progress. Write it down. Progress. Progress. Proverbs 4 and verse 18. He said, but the path of the just, if you are a believer, this is talking about you. The path of a believer, a child of God, is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That the life of a believer is supposed to be progressive. It's supposed to be from one level to another, one level to another. Now, maybe I define progress for us. The dictionary definition is that progress is defined as movement or advancement through a series of events over time. Movement or advancement that happens through a series of events over time. So progress talks about growth. Growing from one level to another level, one level to another level. It is God's desire to see your life make progress. You read your Bible, you see this reflected so many times. There was a time God himself spoke to the children of Israel. He said, you have dwelt on this mountain for so long. Is that in your Bible? Then he said, it is time to go forward. It is time to make progress. This is also consistent with the nature of man. No human being wants to be stagnated. No human being. Regardless class, regardless gender, regardless tribe, regardless region, no human being wants to be stagnated. That as soon as you realize that your life has been stagnated over time, you are not comfortable with that reality. Everybody wants to make progress. And it's also the desire of God to have us make progress. Financial progress, academic progress. So a little child starts growing. The next thing, the parent takes him to a nursery school from dear primary school, secondary school. Now the young boy grows and they tell him this is not all that there is. In fact, before he graduates from secondary school, He's already aware there is another height. Now he starts craving, he rise, jump the university. And many times people don't even stop at BSc. They now crave to go for MSc, then PhD. You see it now? This is the quest for advancement. Everybody wants to make progress. It is consistent with your nature to grow. It is consistent with your nature to make progress. Now, spiritually, you got born again, maybe let's say January, and now you came in, maybe you came for a miracle service, you heard testimony, you saw the sick being healed, you saw the power of God everywhere, you say, if God is truly in this place, I will remain, and my desire is to eventually have a job, let God change my life. God truly will change your life, but if you truly are serious with God, when you remain, after a little time, you're going to find out that, um, Somehow you begin to realize that spiritually speaking, you are nowhere to be found. When you see people pray, something in you tells you you are left behind. Is that true? Did that happen to anybody? Now you start making quests, you go into fasting, you go into listening to messages and doing everything possible. What are you looking for? Progress. You want to leave the level you are to another level. It is consistent with the nature of man. That you don't want to remain at one level for so long. And on account of this, we go for learning, we go for mentorship, 
we, 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 we apply every kingdom principle that we know to be responsible for progress, hard work, diligence. Now, the problem comes when you have done everything you know to do. This is where my teaching begins now. You have done everything you know to do. You have been hardworking. You have been diligent. You have been consistent. You, 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 you've learned. You've gone on that tutors, mentors, and it still looks like there is no progress. You have done everything you know to do. At some point, you hear people tell you, I don't know what to do again. I have done everything I know to do. At times, they come to you and tell you, I have prayed. I have read books. I do this. I fasted. But it looks like my life has been stagnated. Imagine relationships not working. You have been into two, three, four, five relationships. They are all not working. At this point, you are frustrated. You are not happy. Progress is not happening. Money comes to your hand, but it doesn't stay. After a while, you look for the same money that came, 200000 Two weeks later, you can't even account for what you did with the money. There are a lot of people, these are the description of their lives. I want to make progress. You can even write down plans. Lord, if you bless me, this, this, this. Now the money comes, you are not even able to do that. Only for you to realize that the money has finished. I want to build my prayer life. And I want to wake up every night. You wake up at night after praying for five minutes. You realize that it's 7 a.m. Now, when this is your situation, three things happen to you. Are we ready to begin the teaching now? Number one. In other words, this lack of progress can make three things happen to you. When you have done everything to do and it looks like you are not moving forward. Three things. And I'm, I'm sharing this so that you can be very careful. There are times God himself can keep you. There are times it can be manipulation. There are times it might be knowledge required to move. Now you have done everything, you are not moving. You have to guard against these three things I'm about to share. Because if you allow them to happen to you, it's going to affect you and you really might not make any serious progress. Number one. Exhaustion, weariness, and tiredness. That's just one. The first thing that happens to you on account of trying, doing everything you know to do and there is no progress, is that you can become weary. You can become exhausted. You can become tired. You've heard people say things like, I am tired. I won't do it again. I'm not trying anything. I am exhausted. I am weary. Now, when, when you come to this point, it is very terrible for you as a human being first, then as a believer. Where you have attempted, it didn't work. You attempted again, it didn't work. You did everything, it didn't work. And now you have resorted to this weariness, tiredness. Even when somebody is encouraging you and telling you, try it again. You are like, no, me, I, I, I'm not doing anything. Let's take, for instance, jam. You want to go to school. You wrote jam the first year. It didn't work. Wrote jam the second year. It didn't work. Wrote jam the third year, the fourth year. Now you told yourself, this is the last time I'm about to write. Now, if I write the fifth time and it didn't work, count me out of school. Now you write the fifth time, Satan heard you. You will do everything possible to ensure that mission don't come. Finally, you tell yourself, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm tired of reading and preparing for an exam. I will pass and not get the admission. Nigerian system is corrupt and X, Y, Z. You make all of this and tell yourself, I'm no longer doing. Now, for a man at that state, it is very difficult to convince him to go back to school. Is that true? No, have you met people like that? It is very, you try to talk, it tells you, you see, you don't just understand. Me, you, everybody else can go to school. For me, I am tired. It is something you can come into on account of failed attempts. You have been trying your best, but it's not working. Weariness, tiredness, and exhaustion. But you see, for many, the problem is that they even get tired very quickly. They don't even stay too long. Two months of trying the thing, it doesn't work. They are now telling you, me, that's not my nature. If I tried, literally it didn't work. I, 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 I just, no, 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 no. There are people that get tired too soon. 
And you have to guard against this, brothers and sisters. You don't guard against it when you enter deep into this realm of weariness and exhaustion. Only God and you can bring you out. Believe what I'm telling you. Only God. Maybe you come to a service like this and this kind of teaching is happening and you are like, Apostle, this is exactly my life. Now, when you hear this, you have to be open enough and trust the ministry of the word of God and the spirit of God to bring you out of that kind of um, um, depress depressive um, situation. Otherwise, you could remain here for a lifetime. You could. Hallelujah. Weariness tiredness, exhaustion. Now, if this has ever been your experience, I'm not saying it is your experience, or you have discussed, interacted with somebody that this was their experience, say amen. So pay attention. This is not a lie. I'm teaching this from experience. I'm teaching this from at least my few years of talking to people and counseling people. You better pay attention to what I'm saying. Even if your father is the president, there is still something that will make you tired and weary. At least you go online and see the way they insult your father. You will be tired of the insult. Are we together? Yes. So number one, exhaustion, weariness, and tiredness. You are not even supposed to allow yourself to come into this. And if for whatever reason you find yourself in this, you have to find a way to come out quickly. Number two, the second thing that happens to us on account of fail attempt, you have been trying, it's not working. You have applied every principle you know to apply, it's not working. The second thing that happens is worries, anxieties, and depression. Worries, anxiety that eventually culminates into depression. So you even hear people confess, I am depressed. No, when I hear people, people send me texts and they tell me that. Apostle, I am depressed. And I'm like, and you are confessing it? Now they have grown from worriness, anxiety. It has, it has reached a point of depression. This is when nothing makes sense. In fact, at this point, you feel like dying is better than living. That's exactly the point. When you... One of the ways you know that what is worrying you has grown to depression is that you begin to feel like dying is better than living. This is the point people get to and then they begin to contemplate suicide. I feel like killing myself. I feel like dying. Oh, I love me. Oh. For me, no matter what happens, I stay alive. A living dog. Ah, I love me. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, I love me. Yeah. Never come to that point where you start feeling like I, I, I feel it's better to leave, to go, than to remain here. No. So, worries, anxiety. Where you talk to people, they are just looking at you. You finish talking, they are nodding. Then you, they ask you, Are you done? They say, Thank you. Please just leave. It is a terrible thing. Very terrible thing. And you see, if you depend on the situation of our nation, this is going to be your life every day. Is that it? As soon as you step out, there are people ready, willing, prepared to ensure they do something around your life that makes you worry. And... Or you just go and listen to the news and hear the things happening. All the killings, the kidnapping, all the things happening in our nation. So, you see, I'm about to teach you the remedy to all of this. And you have to be open to receive it so that you can live a life of, of rest. Everybody say rest. It's very important. Right now, this thing I'm talking about do not even know age. Back then, when we were growing up, depression and worry was for mature and elderly people. Is that it? Now, you come back and see your father sitting quietly and not talking. You know that something is wrong. For us, we walk around and run up and down. We just come and eat what is available and continue. Right now, the age we live in now, a very small boy, the other day someone sent me a text, how that their younger brother of 14 is going into Yahoo. 14 years. That the boy told them he's tired of being broke. 
Now you think about your life. When you were 14, were you thinking about money? See the transition that has happened. I've had people send me text 17 years, 18 years. Please, apostle, help us pray. Let this boy just come back to the Lord. The one that shocked me was when I hear 14. The text is still in my phone. 14 years. Going into ritual. He told his family, I am tired of this situation I see in this house. When I was 14, I can't even remember where I was. Oh, God. We're still struggling to either pass Junior Waiek or we just passed Junior Waiek and we're excited about XS1. Come on, am I talking about somebody's life? Now, unfortunately, look at the transition that has happened. Where a little boy comes and he's telling you, I'm tired. He's even worried and, and he sits and thinks, what is the way out? And they tell him that it's something like, yeah, oh, please, I'm in. I'm in. Let's escape this life of poverty and pain. That's the age we live in right now. Worries, anxiety, everybody's anxious, anxious. Everybody wants to get it done. And then when we try and it's not working, you come back, you are feeling depressed. Lord, why me? Why me in this family? Why me in this region? I should have been. Why am I even a Nigerian? Some of you have asked questions like that. Unfortunately, we are here. Nobody is going anywhere. We are all here. Yeah, so Apostle, I'm planning to travel. You are still in Nigeria. Huh? There is an age you will reach over there. You will feel like coming back to your hometown. There is something about home. Home is always home. Huh? Yes. You go there after a while, you are like, no, see, I'm done with this white people not understanding what I'm saying. I'm going back home. Yes. Hallelujah. So, failed expectation. This is usually what brings people into this realm. Failed expectation. I expected the relationship to work. I expected the business to click. I expected the investment to yield. I expected at least that my prayer life by now should have entered a level of stability. And I can't find any of this expectation being met. And all of a sudden, they find themselves worried, eventually depressed. Tonight, in case this has been your situation, God is about to bring your deliverance. Yes. Because honestly speaking, ba, if you listen to certain people, what they are going through looks justifiable. It, 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 it's really justified the way they feel. Logically, when you look at the situation in the family, maybe father not working, mother not working, you are now the first son, and everybody is looking up to you, and the job you are doing is just 25, and you still plan to go back to school. Now, you don't even know how to start saving 25,000 naira to gather up school fees for school. The family has to feed. It depends on your 25,000. Now, you still have plans to go back to school. How do I make this thing work? There are times you sit down and you are like, how about God? How do I come out of this? So when people explain these kind of things to you, it looks justifiable. Why shouldn't I be depressed? Why shouldn't I be worried? But listen, at least get this one. Worry cannot change anything. So you better just be happy with yourself. Being worried does not add up anything. It only affects your heart. Hallelujah. So you come to church like this. I'm preaching. People laugh. And for you, nothing is funny. Huh? Yes. Even when the whole statement was very funny, everybody laughed and they were just turning around. They turned to you and like, see, Mind your business in your mind. You are laugh and face the other neighbor. Because why should I laugh? What is funny about this life? Now, when you see people have gotten to that point, that's what I'm talking about now. Nothing amuses them. They are looking for somebody to pour. So they go to the road and then enter a tricycle. And then the guy tell them, I don't have the 10 naira change I was supposed to give you. It's 14 naira. I don't have 10 naira. You gave me 15 naira. They stand there and tell you, me and you will wait here. Because they, they really are looking for somebody to be busy with. They will pour everything on you. Finally, they get home. 
the food that was cooked, everybody ate, and then somebody just came and finished your work without knowing you were out, and you're like, ah, all of you in this house will know. Because you are going around full of something in you, and you are just looking for somebody to share it with. Depression. And when you sit alone, Satan begins to give you ideas. Do you think they even love you in this family? Look at the way they talk to you. Do you think your parents love you? Do you think your... You see, every parent truly loves their children. It's just the way of expressing it that might not be right. Are you sure they love you? Kill yourself and leave them alone. Punish them. Let them feel the pain of your living. No, you are the one to feel the pain, brother. You are the one. Number three thing that happened to you on account of lack of progress. Low self-esteem. For me, this is very, very powerful. Low self-esteem. If this catches up with you, brother, you truly need an urgent help from God. Because you can become a graduate eventually, but this thing is still following you. Huh? Yes. Loss, I mean, the way you perceive yourself. Very handsome young man. But you tell him you are handsome. He said, just insult me now. He, he, he's not, he, that is the way he sees himself. When you look at him and say, God, you don't look fine. Or he said, do I, do, do I, why should I look fine? He's happy with that kind of compliment that I tend to attack his pedigree. Tell him something good about himself. He's not that he's not happy. You see, this is what happened to a very beautiful girl. You see the lady extremely beautiful. But let her start talking. You are like, ah, ah. So what exactly is making this girl feel small about herself? You don't seem to get. Very beautiful. She speaks well. But the way she talks about herself, you know that something is wrong. Beauty does not care low self-esteem. Huh? handsomeness does not cure it believe me it doesn't it doesn't the way you begin to perceive yourself i tried it didn't work i did everything it didn't work they promised me this and when i arrived there they shouted on me and sent me away is it that something is wrong with me that's how it starts am i really good enough for this for this success and after a while you begin to conclude it's like i am not really the one this thing can be for others but not me everybody comes maybe cheat on you and maybe um oppress you do something around you and then walk away you are like so why is my life like this must everybody come and just pitch on me do whatever they feel like doing and leave why is my life it starts by asking why why me am i really good enough eventually you start answering yourself it's like i'm not it can now get to a point where you conclude every other person has it but not me when it gets to that point brothers and sisters satan is already attempting to lock you somewhere he's already becoming a stronghold low self-esteem you can do it say no not me I don't think I, I tried it, it didn't work, so I, I, I've given up. It can't be me, every other person can do it. You see, when you, when you are attacked by this low self-esteem, there are many things you don't try again. You just withdraw to yourself, and you are there all by yourself. Every other person can do it, but not you. I am royalty. I know who I am. Right? I'm walking in power. I walk in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I walk in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I, I know who I am. You are favored in the name of Jesus. Everybody shouts amen and believe. Then you sit there and say yes. Everybody has been testifying. I don't know when it will be my turn. 
I know everybody can have this prayer, but not me. A young man asks you out, and you're like, really? Do you mean what you are saying? Hmm. Maybe it's not me. Oh, go and look for who you are about to talk to now. And let's ask you carefully. You're already feeling you don't even qualify for this guy. Why? You saw him lead prayer in family worship. So for climbing this place, he's in a height. Now, you now, you are somewhere in a pit. Yes, yeah, so allow me to talk. We'll soon do our relationship series, but that's it. There are people like that. He suit up, come to family worship, and he, the way he walks around now, he just call you. You're like me. You turn around, or he, he, yes, you, you. He's already telling us that there's a way you perceive yourself. There's a way you perceive yourself. Please send me your account number. You mean my account? <gasps> In fact, there are people. When a man of it has happened to me, people, I pray with people and they're like, at times I even send people texts. They send me texts and I reply. They're like, ah, because you reply me of all people. You replied me. I'm like, are you not a human being? I got your text. Why shouldn't I reply? That is the way the person perceives himself. Hallelujah. You see, there is this healthy entitlement mentality you have to have. That as you walk the earth, you know who owns it. The one that owns it is your father. He doesn't just own the earth. He owns everybody that lives in the earth. So he can choose to navigate anybody towards your direction. Huh? You walk around with this healthy mentality. If God is looking for anybody, I'm, I'm available. I'm the one. If this must happen to anybody, then I'm the one. It didn't work yesterday. I only learned how to do it better today. You see it? You don't come on account of failed attempt and just conclude something about yourself. No, no, no. You ask those that have done something substantial in life. They try... Do you know that you can even fail trying out what God asked you to do? I mean, it was God that gave you the instruction. Do this. You can still fail obeying God, brothers and sisters. How about those God gave instructions, start ministry? They started out and it didn't work. I know a man of God in this nation with a mega church that started twice and the ministry was dying. All instructed by God. It was the third attempt that made it work. So what do you say about that? That you still can fail obeying God. It's not the source um, of, of, of the failure, whether it's lack of knowledge or say, motivated by Satan. Right now is the effect we're trying to consider. You don't allow it where you down. God can give you an instruction and it still don't turn out well. Believe me. Has God given anybody an instruction to empty your account? You thought that by the next day. No, has it happened to anybody? I'm giving you an example now. You heard God. Or has God told you, this man is your husband. And it didn't turn out that way. Okay. <laughs> Start for thread. You blew all the account. All in the name of Jesus. It was an instruction from God to go into trade. You started after doing all your prehazards and practice. You now thought you are you are dear by the word of God and the counsel of the Spirit. This thing was what you blew all the account. It was God that asked you. Now, when this happened, the effect is our concern. The effect. How do you now feel about yourself? And I will not I will always worship you 
So watch this. The first is what? Weariness. Exhaustion. And tiredness. Then the second. Worries, anxiety, and depression. And the third. Low self-esteem. You are good enough to win. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Whoever is having it work now is not better than you in any way. No, I won't try again. No, it's better to fail trying than to fail sitting. Ah, uh, it's better to fail trying. It means you really are even good enough to try than to fail sitting down. So go again. Go again. If it is ministry, try again. If it's your prayer life, go back again. If it's a job, apply again. If it is jam, write again. If it's an exam, write again. Don't sit back and fold your hands. Go again. Hallelujah. There was a point I sat down to think about ministry and how I saw ministry work in this our territory. I knew that there was trouble. And guess my result before I graduated from school. Is either it work or it work. Is either I succeed or I succeed. There was no failure in the equation. It just had to work. It has to work. I tried it. Maybe organize a program. Nobody showed up. I organized another one. Another one. Why sit back and cry? And no, 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 no. Try it again. Hallelujah. So as you go about improving yourself, applying principles, advancing yourself and doing all of this. No matter what the outcome is, there are also three things that must not live your life. No matter the outcome, there are three major things that must not live your life. Huh? Don't allow weariness. Don't allow low self-esteem. Don't allow depression. Then there are three things you must guard jealously as a believer. They must not live your life. For you to really be on the track. Still be on the track. Three things. There are threefold cord that cannot be broken. I'm telling you. Huh? Are we ready? Number one, love. No matter what happens, don't lose your love. Love for God and love for people, love for yourself. Don't lose this three dimension of love. Don't lose it. I love God. My love for God is intact. I will never come to a point where I ask God, why? Why me? I, 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 are you fair? Are you not fair? No, 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 no. My love for him remains. Then my love for people and then the love for myself. There are people that don't love themselves again at all. They don't see anything good about themselves. They can try to love others. And you see, it's amazing how that you can't give what you don't have. Trying to love people when you... You see, we will know by how you try to love people. from Whether you love yourself or not, we will see by how you love people. Because you can't love effectively if you don't love yourself. You can't. The Bible says, love your neighbor. How? And is a process of what you have for yourself. You don't love yourself, forget it. You can't be able to love effectively. You can't be. So I love God. I love humanity, people around me, and I love myself. I can never come to a point where I think less of myself, where I begin to think it's better to die. No, 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 no. I love me. I love me. Love. Let me show us a few scriptures. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 8. You are not a failure if you still have love. Everybody, the first three words, want to read. Charity faileth not. You tried the business, it didn't work. Provided you have love, you didn't fail in that business. You tried the relationship, it didn't work. Provided love still remains, you didn't fail in that relationship. Because love does not fail. Love is the nature and character of God. It does not fail. Love fell not. But whether there be prophecy, business, contract, all of this can fail. But for love, 
it doesn't fail. I think I've shared a story here about one of our ladies in Kefi that had been at home for seven years looking for admission. Now, when she wrote jam last year, they still didn't give her admission. She packed herself and went to Kefi. She was attending lectures with everybody. She did matriculation with everybody. No, no admission. No. Entered matriculation, hired the gown, wore the gown, entered like every other person. No admission. School closed around 19 December. We did our last meeting in Kefi. Exams was to start on the fourth. She's still not admitted. And she came to me with tears and told me that was the last service. She told me, Daddy, I'm going back home. I'm feeling ashamed. I'm feeling bad. I waited for seven years. Even when I applied faith and everything, I came to school without admission, hoping it still didn't work. I asked her, my dear, thank you for the explanation. What is your name? She said, my name is Love. And I told her, Love, fail it not. So I admit you in the name of Jesus. She laughed and said, Daddy, you don't understand. I, I, I mean... You know the way people try to make you understand. Exam is starting 4th of January. School has closed December 19th. I mean, that break in between is just to go and eat rice, come back, write exam. And you have not been admitted. Firstly, secondly, all the lists are out. So she tried to explain. I asked her again after all the explanation, what is your name? She said, my name is Love. I said, Love faileth not. I admit you now in the name of Jesus. So go come back and write your exam. With tears in her eyes, she did like this. I hoped that she left. December 27 in the evening. Not morning. If it was in the morning, you would say somebody mistakenly went to work and punched one computer that sent her in the evening, real evening, December 27. She got an, an email, a text, congratulations admitted into National State University. And guess what? This is the testimony. The exact course she attended lectures for was the exact course they gave her. The exact course. She sent me text immediately. You could sense the excitement from her text. January, she's the first to arrive. She's ready, already writing exams. And I said, why not be excited? Love, fail it not. Fail it not. It is a revelation you have to get. As soon as she called her name, I knew that uh -uh, from scripture, if it is love, it doesn't fail. So imagine that was the name of my child. With this revelation, seven years wasted, no way. No way. Love doesn't fail. The business didn't work, let love remain. The relationship didn't work, let love remain. Let it not go into worry, depression, low self. No, let love remain. It was the man that left. God did not leave. Ah, uh -huh. Yes, it was the contract that left. God did not leave. Love is the nature and character of God. Let it remain. Hallelujah. Now, you know, as a proof that love is not there, let me tell you what happened. You will blame everybody, insult everybody. Every other person will be responsible for what you are going through. It is my uncle. It is my friend. It is this. When you start blaming people for where you are and for the things happening around you, it is a proof that love is absent. So check your life. Who have you been blaming for everything happening now? If there is somebody responsible, then it's no longer love is absent. Love is absent. Hallelujah. Two scriptures on this. First John 3 and verse 11. Barata kaba sataya. Verse 1 started by saying, what manner of love is this that the Father has for us? Now, let's read from verse 11. He said, for this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should what? Love one another, regardless what happened. Next verse, let's read on, please. Let's be a bit fast. We are reading through 18. He said, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and sleep, he blamed his brother. Love was absent. He blamed his brother and killed him. And then the Bible said, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Of course, they have to hate you. They don't have love. 
we know that we have passed from death unto what? Unto life because we love. Not because we pray in tongues, because we love. He that loveth not his brother abided in Things are bad already. You are you are already dead. As good as you might be walking around, you are walking corpse. That without love, you are dead already. Have you seen this? You are not just a failure. The Bible says you are a dead man if love is absent. We know that we have passed from death unto life if we have love. You don't have it. The Bible says, as far as God is concerned, when he looks at you, you are a dead man. You are not even existent. You are not just a failure. You are dead when love is absent. Next verse, please. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. Hmm. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Everybody read the remaining line. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You have to admit that love naturally. Two more verses. But whosoever had this world's good and seared his brother have need and shorted his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? 18. They now said, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in, but in express it when people meet you express it all i have is ten thousand in my account and somebody's in ten need of two thousand me i'm trying to gather up something now you know the way nigeria is no we don't love by the situation of the nation huh i forgot who came up here and said tell your neighbor you are not in massacre as a matter of fact you are not in massacre you are not in nigeria huh you are from Zion. You came from somewhere. You are a pilgrim here. You are just passing by. So you cannot begin to live by the modus operandi of this realm. You come from another realm. Now may the love of God uh, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us how long? Forever. You should have love forever, not for a while. Forever. Forever. One more scripture, same John, same first John 4 and 21. Powerful scriptures on love. When you get home, read the entirety of verse 13. And this commandment, we are reading from verse 7 to 21. Chapter 4, verse 7 to 21. Are we there? You don't have verse 7. How did you not have this? <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another. For love is, and everyone that love is born. It was God that gave back to you if you have love. You don't have love, go and look for your father. Huh? You, love is his DNA. If you don't have love, look for your father. God is not your father. Hallelujah. Next verse. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is. The more of God you know, the more of love you have. Huh? Yeah. In this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. That we might live through him. Uh-huh. Hearing his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the payment for our sins. Forget the English word here. Next verse. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Everybody say love. Love. If there is no love in you, you can't make progress, brothers and sisters. You can't make progress. So no matter what leaves you, ensure you guard this love. Guard it. Guard it. My love for God is in place. My love for people is in place. And hope you know to love is a commandment. You don't choose who to love. You can choose who to like, but you don't choose who. You can choose who comes close to you, but you don't choose who to love. So the fact that you are closer to me might not mean that I love you more. It might just mean that I've decided you should be close. I like you, but not like I. Love is a command. You just love. You just love. 
If you want to make progress, please love people. I'm telling you, this is true about every anointed person I know. Every genuinely anointed person loves God and loves people. Loves God and loves people. Do you know there was a point in my life I ran into depth trying to help people. It was, it was the heart I had for people. I mean, somebody will come with trouble. In fact, let me even tell you where it started from. When I started counseling people, when ministry started, if you came with a situation that was heavy, as you are talking and crying, I will join you. Do you understand? Some of you, even if somebody dies, you don't cry. <laughs> I'm not saying that's proof of, proof of love. But that's the heart I had for people. You come with us as you are talking. At times, I used to have this packet of hanky, this white small, small hanky. I will give you one and whole one. Oh, true. Believe me, true. When you start crying, it's so touching. I'm wondering why you are crying alone. I might not be as loud as you, but I'll be helping myself just to ensure when it's time to talk, I'm still able to talk. So you will finish crying, I'll help you. Then we will discuss and pray. It came to a point where I literally will run into debt. Until God warned me, he said, I didn't call you to borrow money for people. And I didn't call you to give money. I called you to give the word of God. If you're a man of God, listen carefully. God did not call you to give money. He called you to give. I had to repent. You have trouble. The little I have, I can give. Then pray with you for God to open doors for you. But as for me, entering debt for your sake, Jesus paid it all. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jesus paid it all. So for me to enter into what Jesus paid already, no, you, you won't be fair. Even if you see me trying to do that, beg me and say, no, please. No, please. <laughs> Are we together? Yes. So you genuinely love God, you genuinely love people, and you love yourself. Love yourself. There are people that are even stingy to themselves. They won't bless you. The money's in their account. They won't bless themselves. They love seeing the figures. 180,000. Ah, Lord, I'm growing. Now, there is no food in your house. Your shoes worn out. You just love seeing that. You, you tell people, it's not about clothes. We know it's not about clothes, but brother, why yellow shoes? Why? At least look for a black one. Yellow shoes. There may be green trousers. You just come like that and you say this. No. 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 Love yourself. And now if you came with a yellow shoe, you are not the one I'm talking to. <laughs> just hide your legs well. Let's enjoy the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love yourself. You see, when God starts blessing you, don't feel bad to bless yourself. Huh? Yes. People might make, I mean, attempt to make you feel bad for treating yourself well. I'm not trying to preach extravagance and all of this kind of life people live. No. But that when God starts blessing you, ensure you live a comfortable life. Ensure it. A good house, a good car, Huh? Yes. God has blessed you. You are so busy. You have to get a chef. Please get one. Nothing wrong. If that will help the convenience to be more productive, please do it. You have one car and you know that two is going to help you to produce more. Get the second one. Because you see, the Nigeria we live in now, if you have a car, they will talk. You don't have a car. You succeed, they will talk. You don't succeed, they will talk. So all of this, forget about it. If you really want to succeed, you must learn not to listen to opinions. Just shut, shut, shut yourself out from all of those things. Love yourself. Hallelujah. The poor will always be angry with the rich. So long as life is concerned. Always, till we go to heaven, the poor will always be angry 
Why would he buy another car? So one now is not enough. And there are poor people around him. Is he the one that made them poor? Jesus said the poor you will always have with you. He didn't call your name. Choose whether you are among them or not. Did he call your name? <laughs> Everybody say love. The second thing that must not live your life is the firstborn of love. Love is the mother of all the fruits of the spirit. Huh? Yes. And the firstborn love gave birth to joy. Joy. Hallelujah. Joy. Now, while you are shouting, it's still unknown. <laughs> but I know... That what must not live your life and my life is joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we together? <laughs> Nehemiah, let's get to the word of God. <laughs> Nehemiah 8 and verse 10. Let's get to the word of God. Some of you can really, really be funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portion unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this is the day, or this day is holy unto our God. Neither be ye, don't be sorry for anything. You eat well and bless others. Don't feel bad for the blessings of the Lord. Now, the next line, he said, For the joy of the Lord Joy is a strength giver. Huh? Yes. You don't make progress if you are weak. The Bible says be strengthened with might in the inner man. That strength comes from joy. You can't be strong if you are depressed. You can't be strong. Have you seen people that are really depressed? They can lie on the bed as though they are sick. Depression is a sickness. It takes away strength. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is mine. It gives me strength. This is why you must refuse worry. You must refuse it vehemently. I refuse worry. I don't have any connection with worriness, with depression, with anxiety. No. No. No matter what is not working, I guard my joy. No matter what is not working, I guard my joy. I will keep it safe. No man, no woman, no situation will have what it takes to snatch my joy from me. The Bible says, for with joy shall we draw from the wells. Draw from the wells. So joy is a strength giver. Joy is a fetcher from the wells of salvation. You have it. Progress is sure. Believe it. Hallelujah. Philippians 1 and verse 3 and 4. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now look at the next verse. He now said, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with what? This guy is praying. He does not even know the outcome of the prayer, but he's already joyful. He does not know the outcome of the business, but he's joyful. He does not know the outcome of meeting this great man, but he's joyful. Joy is always intact. As soon as you find that the enemy has successfully stolen your joy, please, please, you should know that whatever it is God promised you is diverted. Automatically, it is diverted. It can never get to you if you are not joyful. Believe me. This is why the Bible says rejoice evermore. In fact, Ecclesiastes 10. 2 verse 10 rather. He said, and whatsoever my eye desire, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all. So while walking, be joyful. That's what the Bible is saying. You go to your workplace in the morning, be Ah, tomorrow is Monday now. Cry now. Wow. 
traffic. Enter traffic with. Yeah. The Bible said rejoice in labor. Rejoice in labor. You are walking and you are joyful. Have you met a receptionist that smiles and are always joyful? You always like to talk to them. Now there are others that you come, it looks like you are the reason for their they are not smiling, they ask what you are. This direction. And as they are directing you, they turn their face away. They don't care. No. Joy. Joy. Rejoice always. The Bible tells us so, right? Philippians 4.4. 4. Now, let me show you some powerful scriptures on joy. I've read some of this to you before, but let's read it again. Habakkuk 3 and verse 17. Although the business did not work, look at this. Look at this. Some of you are wondering, business in the Bible, yes, so. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, in other words, although things did not work out as expected, neither shall the fruit in me be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail. These things are not working, and the field shall yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall not be any head in the store. Ah, ah. The Bible says in the next verse, be worried and depressed. No, the Bible said, now be worried and depressed. What did he say you should do? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of mine. It didn't work out. Things didn't turn out like I expected. The Bible said, yet you don't have any reason to be sad. Uh -uh. Lord, what are you saying? You just read it now. You just read it now. Uh, the relationship didn't end in marriage like I ex expected. After crying for one night, stop crying and start. I've, I've, me, I've granted you the grace to cry for one night. The Bible didn't even grant you grace to cry any cry. He said, as soon as it didn't work, the next thing you should do is to start. So you should even thank God that I'm a kind pastor. <laughs> Rejoice. Rejoice. This is strategic. I made investment. It didn't turn out like I expected. You don't lash it out on people. I remember, I think early last year, I made an investment. Very huge amount of money. I, I, I invested somewhere because somebody came and told me that is this powerful investment I possibly just made. Um, it was Ponzi scheme, but it was a serious investment. Some of you now. Now, I gave huge amount of money. He went and, and did the investment. And the whole thing crashed. And he didn't know how to tell me. He was worried. So guess what he did? He went and started gathering the money. He gathered, it took him long to gather half. He now came to me. This is where I sat down. He came and met me. I sat down here. It was after one workers meeting or one early morning prayer. This is where I sat. He came and told me, Daddy, I'm sorry this is what happened, but I've gathered half of the money. I'm about to send it to your account. I said, says who? Kneel down, Jerry. You got that half in the name of Jesus. May this morning help you to rise from here. In Jesus' name. And I released him. Tears gathered in his eyes. He looked at me like this. He looked again. I said, why would I collect the money from you? Because the invest what if the investment had worked? What if it had worked? I blessed him back. I said, go and use this money. It's your money. You got that. Use it. And let, let your lifting begin from here. Me? And that was the end of the story. With tears in his eyes, he could not believe himself. Because there are others on him telling them him, find a way. This is Nigeria for you. Find a way to ensure we are all rescued. Because me. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, yes. Jewel 1, this will be a lengthy reading, but please pay attention. Jewel 1 from verse 1 to 12. Then I will show you one more scripture that surprised me some years back. But let's take it from Jewel. And the word of the Lord that came to Jewel 
the son of Petuel. Let's read on. Hear this, ye old men, give ears, all ye inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Let's be a bit fast, media. Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another. That's what I'm about to tell you now. We are, we are rehearsing this to generations. That that which the palmer worm had left had the locust eaten. And that which the locust had left had the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm had left had the caterpillars. You are finished if this happened to your life. <laughs> then he said, Awake ye drunkards and weep and haul all ye drinkers of wine. Why? Because of the new wine. For it is cut off. You won't have any drink to drink again. Close your mouth and start crying. Uh, that you are a drunk. No more drink for you. Everything is dry. Next verse. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he had the cheek, the teeth of a great lion. Uh huh. He had led my vine west and back my fig tree. He had made it clean bare and cast it away. The tabernacle thereof are made white. I mean, the branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin, gathered with sad clothes for her husband. I mean, for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. Eating offering is affected. That a situation hits a country. Even the offering of the church was affected. Do you understand? Is it the one you have that you give offering? Now he said the priest and the Lord's minister, they are even crying because no more offering. <laughs> the field is wasted the land mourned for the corn is wasted the new wine is dried up the oil lamp this can be the situation of someone replace all of those things that we are referring to things in their age yours now could be an investment it could be business it could be something else he said be ye ashamed all ye husbandmen cry all ye vine dressers for the wheat and for the belly because the harvest of the field is everything destroyed. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, even the palm tree. Hmm. And the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. All of these things happened. Why? Everybody. Because joy is withered away. All of this trouble fell on them because there was no joy. Brothers and sisters, I've told you the way to progress is to ensure that joy is in place. When I saw this scripture, I knew that most times when your life is affected, it might not be demons anywhere. It might just be that you have decided not to be a joyful person. Everything went haywire. He told us why. Joy was absent. I have joy, 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 joy. I love the way they call joy plenty of times. Joy in. And then it's a joy in my life. I have, that's still my life inside. That's right. Yeah, I have joy, 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 joy. simple even if you don't know how to sing all that song one two three i have joy plenty times joy 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 overflow in my life steal it. Huh? Yes. If you have to go to your house and write it on your bedside, on your wall, I have joy. Yes. Write it. Write it. There are certain revelations that you should not miss one day. 
you should have it always with you. Get that about with, with, with the loins, I mean, thy loins with truth. Carry it all around. Carry it. Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. When I saw this scripture, I was surprised. Zephaniah 3 17. The Lord your God, please take note that the Lord your God in the midst of thee is, he will save, settle. He will rejoice over you with, so even God rejoice. Ah, he will rest in, we just talked about love now, and he will not stop there. The Bible says he will joy over you with, God sings. I never knew God is a singer until I saw this scripture some years back. Number one, God can rejoice. Number two, God, when he wants to rest, he rests where? In love. Number three, when this thing has reached somewhere, God can burst into singing. God can sing. Of course, one of the proof of joy is that you begin to sing. You begin to sing. You burst out with new songs. The songs might not be well arranged, but they are coming from a bowel. They are coming from a depth. You want to make progress in life, brothers and sisters, love. Number two, joy. Regardless what happens, joy. Joy. Apostle, if you know what is happening, you will expect that I laugh. You just saw it now. That everything is perished. But he expects you to be joyful. The last and then we pray. You can guess what? Peace. Ah, peace. Peace. When Jesus was leaving, he said, my peace, I keep. Jesus didn't leave us with money. Jesus didn't leave us with bank account. He didn't leave us with any gold. What he gave us was peace. He is gone. He said, please, brothers and sisters, my peace, I give to you. That's the word shalom. I've told you that's the Hebrew word that means three things. Number one, it means the literal peace, rest of mind. Number two, it means prosperity and it means welfare. Packaging the word shalom, peace. Prosperity, welfare. All of this restlessness. No, you are too young for it. You are troubled, you are restless, you are up, you are down. No, no, you are too young. My peace, I live for you. That's all I get. Tell somebody I have peace. Come on, confess it again, I have peace. Yeah. Do you know that Jesus is called the Prince of Peace? That he is the source of it, he has it in abundance. He, he so loved peace that he had to make himself the Prince of it. And do you know that God is also called the God of peace? Corinthians, let's see the scripture. In my life. Hey, Second Corinthians 13, 11. Second Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live where? In peace. Live in peace, not in your neighborhood. If you live in a compound, you will have trouble. Live where? If you live in Angua, where is your Angua? <laughs> you will have trouble. But live where? In inside peace. Forget about your physical location. You don't live in Riverside. You don't live in. You don't live there. You live in. Ah, glory. Every time Paul was writing to them, he said, let grace and peace be multiplied. Let grace, every time grace and peace be more. He knew the importance of peace. You won't make progress if you are troubled though. You will even make the right decisions. Live in peace. Not in VJ, not in Lekki, not in Metama. Live where? Because you can live in that town. If you, do you know there are people that are wealthy and they don't have peace? They have the choicest houses. No peace. Keep the scripture. The nicest cars, but no peace. Then he now said, and the God of love and peace. 
Glory to God. He's called the God of love and peace. Our God identifies with love and peace. That state of rest. And you see, peace is not the absence of storms. You just decide to be calm in the midst of it. Remember the story of Jesus? The Bible said there was a boisterous wind. All the disciples were like, we are perishing. We are. And Jesus is calm in the midst of it. They went and touched him and said, care us thou not that we perish. He said, who is perishing here? I can't be drunk. The Bible said when he awoke, one word, peace be. Peace be still. When God wants to punish the wicked, the first thing he takes away from them is their peace. Yes, so. Isaiah 57 and verse 21. He takes away their peace. I'm telling you, no matter how stubborn you are, if your peace is taken away, you are in trouble. There is no peace. Say yes, my God, to the, to the wicked. He takes away their peace. Some of you have watched the Nigerian movie. Somebody kills somebody and his spirit will come. As soon as the spirit appears, I'm here for vengeance. The guy's peace is, he will be running from pillar. That's what it means to lack peace. Peace. You won't know the value of it until you lose it. Huh? This thing called peace, but you won't know the value of it. You are living in your compound peacefully. You won't know the value of it. You are married and you are at peace with your husband. You won't know the value of it until you hear of people that don't have it at all. At all. I will keep my mind stayed on you. That's Isaiah 26, verse 3. All I want to do is to worship you. For you are, for you are incredibly to be praised. For you are great, for you are great and greatly. To be praised, you alone are God, you alone are God. Philippians 4, verse 4. You alone are God, you Philippians 4, verse 4. Please take the key down. It has been so high for me, you have not noticed. The Bible said, Rejoice where? In the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. So joy is around peace. Let's read on. Verse 5, please. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Uh huh. Verse 6, please. Man of God. <laughs> to be praised. Then he said, be careful for what? The word careful there is anxious, worried. There are people, anything can worry them. Anything. Anything. He said, let nothing make you worry. So, Apostle, what if I lose the last money I have in my pocket now? Should I trek home? Trek home with joy. Trek home with joy. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now watch this God. He said, and the God of peace, which, sorry, and the peace of God rather, right? And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind. When you have this, do you know what happened? What troubles people is what makes you surprised why they are troubled. People are like, ah, so you mean you lost this and you are this calm? That's the peace of God that men cannot understand. That's it. The peace of God that passes, it goes beyond the understanding of men. So you lost your, 
your word now, whatever it is, and you still had joy. They're like, ah, ah, after losing your father, yes, yes. Someone sent you a text threatening you. You are still at peace. That is a challenge, life-threatening challenge. You are, you see, some of you that I've sent texts to, when you tell me this and that and that and that is happening, the first thing I tell you is be calm, right? I've said that to a lot of you, be calm. Today, a young pastor sent me a text, my wife is in labor, man of God, please, is in pain, please, I'm supposed to pray. I just said, be calm, she's giving birth immediately, be calm. And I expect to hear testimony when I leave here. Oh, yes. I remember some years back, I was working like that in school. I was in 200 or 300 level with one of our pastors, and we we're just going into school to, to pray and enjoy ourselves. That was the first time this kind of thing happened. Somebody sent me a text. My wife had been in labor for three days. I told the man, it was around 6, 7. I said before midnight, 12, she's giving birth. Don't be worried. It's going to happen fine. And when I finished the call, the pastor tapped me, Pastor Chris. Some of you know him. He's an apostle. Apostle, before midnight, uh -oh. <laughs> I told the man, be calm. I'm talking like a dog, be calm. And around 10 p.m., he called back. We're still together. He said, his wife has given that. I, I look at him like this. He said, Kai. You see it now? You send me a text and tell me X, Y. No, the first thing is please be calm. Because you are not calm. You don't have that peace. You won't be able to take the right decisions. Be calm. Be calm. Be calm. Calmness. Last scripture on this and then we pray. 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 16. Look at how God cherishes peace and what he plans to do to you. Ah! Now the Lord of peace himself. Ah! Give you peace. How long? Always. Aha. Uh -huh. And by. Yala bakaba shataya. By all means. By all means. That's in my place of interest. It doesn't look like you should have peace in this situation. But God said, I will find a way to sneak this peace into the equation. Because without peace, there is no going to be progress. So you cheer up and be calm. It looks like this thing is already gone bad. He said, I will find a way to sneak in peace into the equation. I will give you peace by all means. All means. Oh, Labaka Shataya. He has demonstrated this already. The Bible tells us how he gave Jesus to reconcile us back. He was trying to bring peace between us and the Father. By all means. Even if it means killing his son. By all means. By all means. By all means. You shouldn't be the one rejecting his peace. I will give you this peace by all means. My sister, I know that the burden is so heavy on you. It looks like the whole world is falling on you. It looks like everybody is disappointing you. But come on now. Can you be calm and be peaceful? For I know the plans that I have for you. The Lord is speaking now. He said the plans of good and not of evil to give you an expected. It might not look like it now, but eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered into the mind of anyone. The things that God has in store for you. Keep your mind stayed on him. Be at rest. God cannot be, God cannot be awake for you and you are still awake. No. I told you the story of a young, I mean an old woman. One time where there was an earthquake in a particular western nation. Earthquake everywhere and they came trying to evacuate people and to rescue the few they could find. She was in a, in a duplex somewhere that collapsed. Bringing out everybody. And then they now found her still in her room. After destroying everywhere, it looks like nobody was there. This woman, old woman was in that room calmly until they removed everything and came to her rescue and they asked her why did you look so peaceful she didn't even look like she was troubled as though anything was happening i think they even said she was even sleeping they asked her sir why will you have this level of peace and rest in the midst of all of these things 
Then she said, He that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. But look at her statement. He cannot be awake and I'm awake also. So we cannot waste sleep. If he's awake, I should be sleeping. Rest, peace. I think this is the testimony of Pastor Chris. I heard him share it himself. One time he was lodging in a hotel. He went for a crusade somewhere, I think night of bliss somewhere. And then he's somewhere at the top floor. And then there was an announcement, fire, fire. So everybody was to run out of their room. And everybody was running out of their room to come to the reception. He took his time and dressed, wore his suit. When last you see him with t-shirt? You know he's a man of suit. Corporate time in the whole day. The corporate time in the spirit. Always corporate. He took his time and dressed himself with his suit. Then he was walking down with his iPad and gradually he arrived at the reception. Everybody, even those from the top floor, were already down waiting. Some with towel. And he came out so dressed. At rest, not, not running. He asked him, Mr. Man, why? He said, Fire does not consume fire. Rest. Rest. Peaceful. Rest. Yes. Fire does not consume fire. Share our God is a consuming fire. That no matter what the situation is, do not lose love, do not lose joy, do not lose peace. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No matter what happens, do not lose joy. I mean, love, do not lose joy, do not lose your peace. These three things Galatians 5 22, these three. We're about to pray now. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. What the Holy Ghost can build in you, make you produce love, not depression, not worry, not anxiety. Regardless what is not working, next week is our miracle service. And I think this is really, really powerful preparing us for Sunday. You don't come here on Sunday worried. No, no, you are coming to receive. How am I sure I will receive for myself? Yes, I will. I am the candidate that God has in mind. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Even the anointing works by these three. Huh? The power of God, the anointing, it works by these three. If they are not around, forget about it. God cannot move in a place. Not in an environment where there is hate. Not in an environment where there is depression. Not in an environment where there is trouble. This is why men of God will always want to stay away from distraction when it's close to the time of ministration. Do you know why? It's not just to pray. At times, no picking of calls, no picking of calls, no messages. They just lock up hours to the service. I heard a man of God say, he doesn't even pick a call from his relatives when it's time to service. Because some of them can just call and bring one kind of news that is not supposed to be. Your peace will have to be intact for you to deliver well. Your joy, love. This is why if you are a man of God, here ministry can hardly work if family is not working. Because if that becomes the source of trouble, then forget about ministry. Forget about ministry. These three are powerful. It will help you in business. It will help you in academics. I remember when I have shared my story with you, I went to the board and so carry over. My result, I was the vice president of our faculty fellowship class for. I so carry over. And I was standing on that board. It was my fault. They introduced a new course. We thought they were joking. How do you introduce a course in second semester? So we thought it was a joke. Why will you introduce a course? It was one entrepreneurship. Some of you that are from National State University know that course. They started it in our time. 
Second semester, 200 level. So we thought it was a joke. How will you introduce a course in 200 level? I didn't read. No lecture. And it was real. The exam happened. So I carried over. Say amen. Was it my fault? Yes, ba. Meet me after service. <laughs> Let me lay legs on you. I went to the board and so carry over in that entrepreneurship something. I was standing with about two or three of my friends. I told them, look at this thing. I won't write it. I mean, with joy, with smiles on my face, I won't write it. My classmate that was the evangelism secretary of our fellowship asked me, ah, man of God, so what will you do? I said, it will disappear. Ah! I was so at rest. No worries. I said, it will disappear. Two weeks later, I went to the board first alone. Like Mary Magdalene to confirm if the stone has been rolled away. Say amen. I went to the board alone. I saw that it was no longer there. I, 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 it didn't mean now look like I didn't believe myself. I put my hand on the line of the result because it's locked. It's locked with glasses. I put my hand there and I trace the line to be sure. Then I reached the end. I saw pass. I mean not. I said, ah, ah. Oh God. You are my God. They will now know that I'm your servant. You know, you know that kind of. <laughs> they will now know that I am your servant called by you. I went to that my evangelist. He was the one that usually print my exam form, my exam whatever. Now I went to him. I said, "See, go and help me check that result." See, I told you <laughs> that something will happen. Go and help me check it. I was in the class just bouncing around. Ah, may God give you that kind of confidence. <laughs> When he went and checked, he came back and said, see, you are truly a man of God. I said, I've been telling you now. <laughs> you are truly a man of God. That was the first time I knew even inanimate object can hear. Yes. Even a result that is locked in a glass can change. No trouble, no worry. Standing there, I told them this thing, forget about it. I won't write it. But guess what? The second semester of that, because I didn't joke again. I knew that the Lord showed mercy. I had to prepare and write it and pass officially. Officially. Just that here, don't try it and send me any text. You go and joke one, then say, I'm supposed to send text. This caravan must disappear. Read. I've told you that I had to share the complete story so that you know how it happened. I didn't know that they were serious with that cause. Hallelujah. But peace, it was there. I was not troubled. I knew that it was going to disappear. I knew. I told them, dear, in their presence. Everybody say love. Say joy. Say peace. See, when you leave here, this is not one of those messages you forget in a hurry. I've told you if you have to go and write it by your bedside. Three things that must not leave my life no matter what happened. Love, joy, peace. Write it by your bed. Paste it on the wall. It's your house. Did you pay rent? Write it here. When you wake up in the morning and you're going out, nothing will steal my joy. I live a peaceful life. I go out with the entourage of this tree. I come back with testimonies. Hallelujah. I've got joy. Stand on your feet. Joy. Joy. Joy overflow. In my life, I got joy.
tonight. Lord, I rebuke every spirit of depression, tiredness and exhaustion, worry, low self-esteem. I rebuke them. They don't have a space in my life. They don't have a space in my family. Lift the voice and pray. Turn and lift the voice. I say, cause every spirit of anxiety, spirit of worry, cause every spirit is away and you don't replace it with something you are still in trouble can you lift your voice and pray Lord I refuse to lose my joy I refuse to lose my peace I refuse to lose love come and I will pray you now as a businessman as a minister pray Financially, 
academically, in every area of my life, oh God, I make progress. I leave this level. I shift from this level. Come on, are you lifting your voice to pray? Come on, are you praying? I refuse to be stagnated. I refuse to be limited. I refuse to be limited. I make progress in my business from this night. I make progress from here, oh God. I make progress. I make progress. I make progress. Shaka barata bala na 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 na. Bar. Shaka ta 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 la ka bala ta. Come on, are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? I make progress. I make progress. I make progress. I make progress. I refuse to be limited. I refuse to be backward. From now I advance. I advance. In finances, I advance. I advance. I advance. I advance. Ataka barato boko sobeleta ba, lantera taba losko balata, erata ta 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 beleke barata, joto barata balata beleke haya. Manta barasa sobeleke na 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 na. Oh dear Lord, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and let's speak of our Lord tonight. Every time the word of God comes like this, it comes with a required energy to push you. It's not just letters. The words I speak, they are life and they are spirit. As you listen to that word, Believe me, you are not just hearing because you had ears. Something was happening to your spirit. And by the agency of what has been released into your spirit tonight, I decree and declare you will leave your present level right now. Whether in business, in your spiritual life, your prayer life, the manifestation of the giftings of God upon your life, you leave your present level right now. From today, I decree that you begin to make real progress. Begin to make real progress. Whatever is required, look at this. The Bible says, I will give you peace by all means. Meaning, whatever it requires for God to make you make progress, He will give it to you. I decree in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, a requirement in this season, may God give you. Anxiety, the spirit of exhaustion, tiredness, and weariness. Let it live your life and never come back again. And whoever has been plagued by this seal of low self esteem, inferiority complex, I decree in the name of Jesus, you are coming out of it now. Come out of it right now. Come out of it right now. Come out of it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Your love for God, your love for people, and even your love for yourself be very intact. Let it be very strong. And I decree that may your joy be intact. May nothing be able to take your joy away. May nothing be able to steal your joy. And I decree that the joy of the Lord give you strength always. May the joy of the Lord give you strength always. And by all means, like his word says in Thessalonians, I decree that God give you peace. May God give you peace. May God give you peace. Now, finally, listen. Whatever look like battle in your life, whatever look like a storm, whether in your family, there is no peace. 
in your workplace there is a challenge, whatever has troubled you this day, listen, I prophesy shalom. I prophesy shalom. I prophesy peace. Into your family, peace. Into your workplace, peace. Into your company and office, peace. Over your children, peace. Over your parents, peace. Over your friends and loved ones, peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may God give you peace by all means. And may he keep your heart with this same peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, go and do well. Go and prosper. Go and make progress. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, while everybody remains standing, listen, you know you are here, you are not born again. This is the first way to make peace with God. Listen. If you don't have this one, every other thing we talked about is not possible. You are saying, Apostle, I need to give my heart to the Lord. I need to come back to the Lord. Maybe you gave your heart to him, but a lot of things have distracted you over time. Wherever you are, I want you to take a bold step. Come quickly. I want to pray with you. Come. Even if you are from the overflow, just double up your steps and come very fast. Come. Come. Maybe you love God, but you have never declared him publicly as your Lord and Savior. Come. Don't be ashamed. Take that bold step from where you are standing. For many of you, God is talking to your heart already. Run. Come. You should be excited about this. Do it with joy. Come. Are you coming? Are you coming? Take that bold step. Take that bold step. Take that bold step. Maybe you gave your heart to the Lord, but a lot of things distracted you. Come. Let's welcome you back home. Come. Come and celebrate them as they come. If the Lord is talking to you, don't stay back. Take that step. Don't stay back. Fight that devil telling you to stay back. Come. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. You are coming from the overflow. Come. You are following online and you have to make this decision. We are about to pray with you. Come. This is the first way to have peace with God. This is the first way to have peace with God. If the Lord is talking to you, take that step. Don't allow the enemy conquer and win. Come. Come. God bless you. Hallelujah. I salute your courage and thank you for taking this step and making this bold decision. This is peace with God and this is very powerful. As I pray with you right now, you're going to experience this peace, this love, this life of Christ being extended into your heart. Now, can you place your hand on your heart? I want you to pray this prayer. Mean it from the very depth of your heart. Say, dear Jesus, Say it again, dear Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for me. I believe you raised again on the third day, all for my justification. Today I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life. Forgive all my sins, and I receive by faith the gift of eternal life. I'm born again now. I'm a child of God now. For whatever and backward never. Thank you for saving me. Amen and amen. Father, I pray for your sons and daughters, both following online and the one here. I decree that the name of the Lord be named upon you. From now, love Jesus and be established in grace. Let this peace be extended into your heart. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I decree that you will love God and in years to come, you will be standing strong. Nothing will be able to take you away from the Lord. May this love, this joy, this peace of the Lord go right into your heart. Let it be established in your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it is well with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. We love you and thank you for making this decision. Please, we're going to follow the young man there. And he will go with you. There are people waiting to attend to you. God bless 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 you. The Lord honor you. God bless you. The Lord honor 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 you.
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Tell yourself, I won't lose love. I won't lose my joy. I won't lose my peace. I refuse to be worried. I refuse to be exhausted. I refuse to be tired. I refuse inferiority complex. I have the spirit of God in me. He produces love. He produces joy. He produces peace. Hallelujah. That's who you are. When you leave here, be very conscious of this. Hallelujah. Now, some of you might go back home and say, I want to try this revelation. Some of you right from the road, you might meet somebody that wants to try whether this revelation really sank into your spirit. Prove to the devil that you heard the word of God and it has been imparted into your spirit. Are we together? Now, listen, next week is our miracle service. Amen. We will take our time to minister. You know, one of the challenges a lot of us have is that you have found a place to come and keep yourself refreshed, but you don't invite anybody. If you do that, it's not fair at all. You are not doing well. Do the work of an evangelist. You see, every time we come for service like this, let me tell you what to do. After inviting people, go on our Facebook page, share the live service. Are we together? No, are we together? As soon as the service is making progress, go on our live page, either family worship experience or Apostle Jonathan Shekoya, share the live page. Let people follow it. Those that were not able to come to church, let them follow it online. But that it is your assignment to ensure that somebody hears and somebody is compelled to the house of God. Now, next week, you are not coming alone. Say amen. You have to mean it. You are a child of God. You are not coming alone. Say amen. Even if you have to pay somebody's transport, do it. You are not coming alone. Say amen. The Lord grant you grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, tomorrow is our workers meeting, 5 p.m. So please, every worker be around. There's an announcement I need to pass to everybody. And then 10 hours pulling down altars, my God. So please, ensure you are around. Every altar that has held the lives and the souls of men captive in sin, we have to go down. Say amen. So come Friday, 8 p.m., you can join the prayer department. If you have never prayed for 10 hours, come and try it. Yes, come and try it. So, Friday, 8 p.m., we are here. And then on Sunday, we are back here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Cause his face to shine on you. Be gracious unto you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever.